If you're looking for an easy way to stream video to your Android application, check out the solution from the Video Experts Group. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name is Nigel. Okay, so the Video Experts Group provide a development SDK to assist you and to make integrating streaming video from the internet or any remote source a lot easier. And as you can see here, I've already opened up their website. I will put a link in the description. And basically, you just go select, select on my Android get it now you all have to fill in a few basic details of your name and email address and then you'll get provided with a link for where you can download a zip file and once you've downloaded the zip file you should see something resembling this if you look at the source and under Android Studio you see they do provide a number of um, application examples for you to go through um, in this tutorial I'm just going to be basing the uh, tutorial just on the SDK test simple. The next step will be to creating an Android project from scratch. Um, notice I've already opened up the SDK test simple. So if you select new project and for project name I'll just call it Video Experts Group Let's just call it demo. Select next. I'm just going to keep the default set as is phone and tablet. And again, I've selected empty activity. I don't want any unnecessary code in my project. And I'll just keep the name as the main activity. Okay, that's now built. So let's go back to the SDK zip file or unzip file and have a look at the documentation. So I recommend opening up the Android Studio Projects PDF. Let me just reduce the size of that text so it's easy to see. Right, so it's best to follow these instructions. We are going to need to install some libraries into our project. So let's follow number one first. It says to create a new folder in app source main JNI libs. So if I go back to my finder window here, we can see the VGX demo. Just You can create this project any place you want, but just for ease for me, I've created it inside the um, actual SDK itself. So I'm just going to open up another tab with the VGX demo just to make it easier to copy the libraries across. There it is there. Let's move that tab. So if we go back to the documentation and it says we've got an app source main and JMI lib, so we've got to create this library here. So app source main and inside here we'll create the library JNI uppercase libs. Okay, let's see what next for the documentation. It says copy the three folders, the ARM folders and x86 from release libs to the folder we've just created. So if we look at JNI libs here, here are the three folders they're talking about. So I'm just going to drag those into the JNI libs. There they are there now. And it's a good idea to make sure it's a, it's a copy, not a move, so double check that. Back to the documentation. Create another new folder, and this might exist, it does in my project, uh, called App Libs. So let's just go there. So if we go App Libs, it's got nothing in there, but it does exist. The libs folder does exist. 
back to documentation and copy these two .jar files, the media player SDK and the org Apache HTTP, HTTP legacy .jar files from release libs into the folder we just created. So here it is here, libs jar, the media player SDK and the org Apache one we need to copy across. libs and they are there now and back to documentation again and it says to replace the build.grader file here in fact I'm just going to copy the two dependencies here and put it into my Gradle file I want to I've created a brand new project so I want to keep the versioning as is so all you need to do is just to copy the dependencies so we need to go to the project now so go into the gradle scripts the build.gradle for the module there and here i'm just going to paste in those two dependencies and you will have to resync sync's now completed Okay, while I'm inside the editor here, I'm going to add the uh, internet permission to our Android manifest file. Um, it's not mentioned in the SDK at this moment of time, but it's, it's important. You're going to need that so you can actually connect and stream a video. So inside our Android manifest file here, we'll use this permission. And we want internet. So make sure you have this in the manifest file, or else we basically that application can't uh, use the internet. Okay, the next step here is uh, we're going to set up. Additionally, to playing the video, we're going to put a on touch listener to play pause, basically. So I need an icon for that. So if I go back to my Finder. I've already highlighted, I'm going to use the pause circle outline here. So I just need to copy the path of where the icon is. And go back to my Android application. And we're going to add that icon to the resources folder. So click, select new. Image asset. Select the asset type as image and paste in our new image to the path here and it's a good idea to rename it to say more applicable so I see pause circle outline click next I'm happy with that and finish okay so we've now added an icon to our project the next step here is to set up our layout file so go back to resources here layout and select activity.main or whatever you've called your XML file. Okay, just for ease of positioning, I'm going to use a frame layout. And we don't need a text view here. That's just the hello world text view so we can remove that. And the first thing I'm going to add here is the actual um, media player view itself that's supplied to us by the SDK. And for the width, I'm going to select match parent. And for the height, I want to just wrap around the video for that. And I just want to add some more here. I want to add an ID. And I'll just call the ID the plow view. And I also want to add the positioning for this. And it's a gravity equals center. And this thing. Let me straighten that up. Okay, so 
that should be all we need to set up for the plow view but I also want to put our icon that we just added to the project I want to put that into this layout so it's going to be an image view and the width is going to I just want to wrap that content there and I want to add an ID to that as well and I'll just call this the pause view and I want to add positioning to that so the gravity and center that and I also want to set the visibility as gone for the moment nothing there and I also want to add the actual icon itself which I've called the IC pause circle outline. So that should be that should be enough there for our layout. The next step is to actually go into the main activity source code here. And first thing I'm going to do here is just to implement um, some callbacks provided to us by the media player. and implement those methods okay um, we've got two here it's a good idea to set up the status um, that returns to us each time we make a request up to the media player itself the media player makes a request we get the status coming back to us to let us know what's happening just in case you've got any problems and you can look up in the documentation itself we'll give a description on the error code it's quite handy for debugging and on receive data returns a byte buffer you can use that to actually save the data you're streaming as well okay so we'll make a start here so I want to set up a member for our media player Let's call this media player. Set it to null for the moment. We'll initialize it in the on create. Now let's go inside our on create and initialize our media player. We will need to cast that, of course. And call find view by ID and get the ID for the media player. What is it? Player view. And while we're here, let's initialize our pause view. And so that's an image view. I'll make it final. That's an image view. And we'll call it pause view. Again, we need to cast it to an image view. And that's the pause view. Okay, before we make our connection using the media player, we just need to set up some configs for it. So we actually create a media player config object for that. And I'm just going to call this config. We'll just create a new object for that. Okay, now let's set up a config. And the first thing it's good to set up is set connection URL. Okay, and the address I'm going to use for that is the actual same URI we use for the simple um, uh, simple test plot. So let me just put that in there. So if we look at simple test plot here, there's the connection URI. So I'm just going to paste that. URL, URL, and I'm just going to set up one more config here, which is set decoding type. Zero is for software, for better performance, I'm going to try out their hardware decoder. Okay, the next step it's just a matter of just opening it, which will make a connection and start the streaming. So we'll call the media plot. 
open, we need to pass it the config and a representation of the activity object itself. And that should start up and start streaming our video. Now I'm going to add a touch listener to the actual player itself. So when we touch the player screen, if it's playing, it will pause. If it's paused, it will play. Okay, so also inside our on crates underneath that, we'll call, call the media player again and call set on touch listener. Create a non touch listener object inside as an argument. Let Android Studio do its magic. Okay. And change that to true because we are going to consume the on touch. First thing I'm going to do here is set up a switch, call event to get the action for that event. And we just want to use the um, uh, action down. So we'll set up a case for that. Motion event action down. Okay, there's some states. So we, we touch the screen, but we only want to touch, we only want it to pause if the player is actually being started. So we check for that state first. The very first thing to check, we actually have a media player is not equal to null. So we do have a media player object. Now we do some state checking here. Um, what I'm going to do here just to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to make a copy of the media player there and add the player states. So this will give us the state of the player, whether it's stopped or started, um, which is where we can react where we want to pick up the on touch event. So we call the playback state and it provides us for a type. Now we can call our media player to get the state. And these, these states are actually numbers, so we want the state to be larger than opening. So if we call the player state, well now we need to pass an off type again, player state um, for opening in this case. So we want only want to play the video if the state is af um, after the opening, basically. It's the bigger that. And just let me make a copy of the above line. And we also want to do it if the state is less than closing. So if it's closing, we don't need to pick up the on touch event. And change the opening there to closing. Okay, so if all these events um, are satisfied, we can get down here and we just want to pick up whether or not it's paused or playing because it's going to be toggling with the on touch listener. So let's do a check there, call our media player and um, call get state. If get state is equal to the player state, let's say paused, it just showed up there. So if the state's currently paused and we touch the screen, we want to start playing again. So call the media player and play. And if it's playing, if it's in the pause state, we're going to be displaying the um, pause icon. But if we start playing again, we want to remove that pause icon. So we call the pause view set visibility um, to gone actually. And we also want to check to see if the media player started as well. So we'll do it else if. Call the media player again, get state is equal to player state started in this case. And just let me copy these two lines here, make the modifications to them. So if we're playing, if we're started, we touch the screen, we want to pause.
Now we're in pause, we want to actually show the pause icon to be visible. And just before we run this, we're just going to have to tidy, tidy up the media player resources when we close the application. So we'll just go down, oh, go down here, underneath the on create. I'm just going to call on destroy. And above the super constructor, I'll call the media player close. And then underneath that, media player also has a on destroy as well, so I'll call that. So we just want to clean up all the resources that the media player requires for when we leave the um, leave our application. Okay, so let's try running this and see how we can stream a video. Make sure my USB C cable is plugged in correctly. Application's now started. I'm going to record this so you can see what's going on. As you can see, we are now successfully streaming our player. And you can pick up that noise as well. Hopefully it's not too noisy. I'm holding it right next to my microphone. Apologies for that. So as you can see, it's we can successfully stream a video from our application. Okay, that concludes the demo of using the VXG Mobile Player SDK. Um, the main benefits we saw here was how easy it is with minimal code to actually stream a video onto your application itself. And there's also a number of added benefits by using a library such as the Media Player SDK, the VXG Media Player SDK. Uh, SDK. Um, you can utilize a number of cores to help you with your decoding. Um, there's this uh, functionality where you can save and provide thumbnails and you can also record and save the video as well amongst a, a number of other uh, support features that they provide as well. So that concludes this tutorial. Thank you for, time, for taking the time to watch this one. Bye for now.